Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show, we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the finale of The Outsider. A great finale. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Literally picking up where left episode 9 left off. Bullets flying, home dude still dead. I was like, there was some part of me like, maybe? It's like, no, it's literally his face was blown out from like that because the way um uh, ralph was talking about it basically the uh, the sh- um bullets that uh jack are using it's like at one point eunice as the arm gets shot he's like you're lucky it didn't rip your arm off dude bullets are flying it's like dude i was like they are cornered he's got multiple bullets dude it's like this does not go it's like how the hell do you they're trying to shoot at him but it's like they can't get a good line of sight on him considering the fact this is the vantage point he has the um how we uh Clyde and his uh, Claude and his brother show up and like all right Claude's brother cars lock and loading and shooting and shooting because he knows like the fact of the matter is it, I think he's so desperate to protect his family that's his little brother he cares about him so deeply so it's like I'm gonna do whatever it takes uh he puts himself like out there in the open you know and it's like things don't end well for him and it's just like you know how he ends up helping you know uh Ralph I mean not um helping uh claude pull his brother back and it's just like everyone's trying to get cover just like this is not good i was like dude this is like the most effed up situation and he's trying to get reception but he can't so he goes to the car holly's telling him not to go but he doesn't anyway and it's like almost i was like come on andy come on like come on come on but jack gets him and it's like it sucks because it's like the car just tilts forward more then jack starts aiming at the gas tank it's like jesus like holly wants to run to the car but how he's like i'll get him i'll get him once he gets there our car explodes how he catches on fire power is like maybe how he's still alive it seems like more likely the 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 um shockwave from the explosion because he was so close probably the, the impact of it ended up killing him and it's like and just like that like half the, half the team is dead just like that i'm like jesus and holly which is so heartbroken because of andy because this is probably the first person she's gotten close to like that in a very long time and it's just like to lose him like that especially because for her she brings it up later on to ralph it's like andy was only there because he wanted to be there with her so you know i think there's a part of her that's probably going to blame herself for it but um she's like go to hell she screams out like jack had a locked on tour immediately my brain was like is it actually not going to let jack pulled a trigger because i'm thinking like oh it actually wants to kill holly itself that's what i was thinking at first but i think in that moment because jack was drinking himself because he was trying to like compensate for the fact this it's like i gotta do this terrible stuff but i have no choice i'm gonna do it anyway but he kind of fights it long enough because he was like the fact of the matter is it's like screw you and he lets his snake bite him immediately my brain is thinking like the snake venom like because once again he tried to kill himself before but he couldn't and because this thing has such a tight net control of him but by letting the snake poison him i think it pollutes his mind a little bit he's just like it it makes it harder for this thing to kind of psychically get control of him i'm thinking that's my understanding i could be like way over analyzing it but i think that's why he let the snake bite him because i think there's also a part of him is like i can't kill myself so what i'm gonna do is let it kill me but it, you know he ends up walking down there and he ends up you know saying it's in the cave and then kills himself so showing to me that it does have a little uh, weaker control over maybe just because of the state that it's in right now maybe because it hasn't eaten it just happened to be weak. but it's just messed up that he's like it's just it's a little effed up that you stop now after you've literally killed half the group you stop now and just it's like you were able to fight back you know it's it's just like maybe you could have done it a little sooner before you start killing people but it's just like it just sucks and just in amidst this devastation it's like Eunice is staying behind you know Claude is staying behind um Holly and um Ralph go inside and it's interesting as I were proceeding through because I'm like, oh, this isn't good. Because immediately my brain, and it, you know, because I, I brought it up last episode, my initial thought was they don't know if they would be able to kill this thing. I'm like, you're going to have to bury this thing alive. I was, I will shit you not, I literally believe one of them was going to get buried with that. At first I was like, is it going to be Ralph? I was like, that suck of it was Ralph, but I was like, maybe it's going to be Claude. I thought Claude was going to be like, you guys get, I'm getting way ahead of myself. But um, it was interesting because as they were progressing through, Holly looked at the railings and she was like, look, 
it's it's uh, from it the from uh, El Cuco, so it's like there's the handprints and stuff, kind of suggesting it's like this thing's scared of falling too. So this thing can die because it's scared enough that it might fall or something. So like the fact is it's holding on so tightly to the railings, kind of shows that you know it has some kind of human fear like them of you know dying. So they progress further in and actually find the cave in where all those rescuers went in looking for the boys. Um, and all those names are written there. And like because Holly was looking and saw like its handprints all over the place. It's like it went wild because literally, essentially, food was on the other side of the wall, but it couldn't get to it. And just like the smell of it was just driving it crazy. Just because it knows there are bodies over there. It just can't get you can't find any way to them. So it was literally driving itself crazy because of it. But then we have the confrontation. I didn't expect the confrontation to be what it is. Part of me was wondering, like, is this thing going to talk to him? Literally, like, two minutes after I have that thought, it starts talking to him. Like, hey, all right, just come over closer to the light. Watch your step, essentially. And it's like, oh, crap. Because obviously this thing is now fully assimilated as a looking like Claude after it's had it, you know, it's snack. It's still in a weakened enough state. I am wondering... Would it have been, could you kill this thing if it was in its full strength? Like if it had like just eaten or whatever, like it's eaten stuff, but it's still not its full strength like it could be. But um, obviously it's a situation of like, all right, what do we do? Like this thing is asking questions because it's like, oh, you know, Claude's been thinking about you a lot. I only call you um, Holly because I don't know your last name. It's just like Gibney. He's like, all right. So it's like there, there's an actual, co- I'm like, wait, we're, we're doing this? I mean, to be fair, this is, this is, a, this is a one in, a one opportunity thing to learn, like, what this thing is. She's trying to understand, like, why do you do what you do? It's like, why do you kill? It's like, I do it for survival, just like you. And obviously, Ralph is kind of pissed because it's like, basically, later on, even like, stop asking this damn thing questions, you know? And so, the fact of the matter is, the moment he was kind of like, you know, uh, you can't, you can go ahead and kill me. You can pull the trigger, Ralph, but you'd be killing yourself. I'm like, what is that? And I was wondering, if like, I was like, are you going to do something? And then it starts yelling. I'm like, the, the sound of the gun echoing might cause a cave in, right? So now it's a situation of like, it's kind of a bit of a stalemate and she's still asking questions because it's interesting because the creature talks about kind of like this glow that it kind of like it, this, this, these feelings it kind of gets and it's like, why, why children? Because, and he basically says straight up, because they taste better. And it's like, that pisses off Ralph, but he can't pull the trigger. And it's like, it's because the thing it's like, you know, I can't let you leave. And Holly's like, you know, we can't let you leave. Um, because the fact of the matter is, you know, Eunice is still outside. The fact of the matter is he could call back up. And re- but Claw walks in. And he's got a shotgun in it. Well, he's got the gun in his hand because initially it's like, you know, Claude and Holly are trying to talk him out of not firing a gun. But the fact of the matter is for him, it's like, I kind of have to. And I think the thing closes his eye because they are connected. It knows what Claude's going to do it because it knows Claude better than it does anyone else at this point in time just because of that. I was like, is Claude going to do it? I thought maybe he's going to like, you know, hit it with the uh, buck of the gun or something like that. He's like, nope, straight up shoots it. Starts a cave in. Everyone's like immediately when they come, like you know, it's like oh crap. I was like, this isn't gonna. I thought they were gonna get out of there, but it did, the cave in didn't go in completely. So it's like all right. So they they circle back and initially they run into Ralph, but I'm like, oh, wait, wait, I'm not Ralph. They they run into um Claude. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Are we sure this is actually called? I I got paranoid because I was like, they're gonna twist it on us somehow, some shape or form. I know they're gonna twist this on us. That that's actually the real Claude and uh. That, that's uh, El Cuco pretending to be Claude and the real Claude's over there. Like, I felt like it did something in that matter of time. I mean, to be fair, it was a short amount of time, but I just assumed, I was like, you're going to do something, you're going to twist it. But then it's like, no, that was straight up El Cuco over there that's got like a stalagmite or stalactite. I don't remember which one is which. Um, in its stomach and a gunshot wound. And it's like, oh, is it dead? Holly comes over to the do you have a knife or something? Stabs it in the heart. Because I think for her, that was kind of her own little way of kind of, well, for one, assuring that it's dead, you know? It's like, they don't have any go-to way of making sure this thing is dead, but aiming for the heart. It's like, that's kind of a solid enough plan uh, if for whatever, you know? Because obviously, it had, I guess it has some anatomy close enough to a human that, you know, that would kind of make sense. Especially considering the fact that it's shape-shifting into a human, so that must mean when it shape-shifts, it, it obviously has a shape-shift. It shape-shifts into, like, having human organs and stuff like that. So that would make sense, but it's just, like, I think it was just kind of like a final, like, all right, you know. But, um, you know, they get clawed and they're about to leave and everything. I was like, all right. But then um, he stops. Um, but then, um, geez, Ralph stops, and he sees... Uh, Derek 
which what I'm assuming that was Derek and uh, Frankie's brother. Not unless that was Frankie himself. That might have been. I could sworn I thought that was Derek, but maybe that was Frankie. I don't know. Uh, it probably was. At that moment, I was thinking like, because Holly's like, "What is it?" And he was like, "You going ahead." At first, I was like, "Is that supposed to be like it messing with him one final time or something like that, or is it just kind of like?" Or was that kind of like a supernatural thing of like their ghost being like, no, this isn't over yet. And so he goes back and is like, okay, you're playing, I get it, you're playing possum. And he's like, he takes the knife out and everything, like the fact of the matter is we were wondering if you could be killed. But it's like, I guess like whatever fragments of like whatever it is has as a heart, you know, wasn't enough to kill it. Um, so now it's the whole question of like, well, what do we do? The fact of the matter is we can make it so that, you know, people come by and, you know, kind of see w w this whole situation for what it is, or it could turn you into, you know, the scientific, uh, community and they'll slice you and dice you trying to figure out everything they could about what you are. And so when it's all said and done, I like, I even love this lifting up its hand, Ralph grabs it, stabs it to the ground. It's like, dude, because I think this is, and it, it, to me, it makes the most sense that a person to end all this would be um, Ralph. And so it's the thing of Ralph, it's like, we can't let you live because like the fact of the matter is it just, it, there's just too much in all of this. It's just, it, I think it's also the opportunity of like, it, it presents itself in a situation of like, if you let this thing live, that it, there's more of an opportunity for it to get away, to kill and feed more and get stronger, you know? So it's like, might as well cut off the head of the serpent right here and now. And uh, Ralph grab and it's shape shifting its face. Ralph like bashes its head in and it's like, oh, it's over. They leave and it's like, all right, so what do we do? Got to get her damn story straight. I'm like, okay, cover up mode. Here we go. So they're putting the stories together. Eunice is calling up the DA being like, yeah, uh, this is what happened. Jack, blah, 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 blah. Claude, what was the story? How did this whole thing go? It's like this and that. Like, oh, we're running through the routine. I'm like, yo, it's so neat to actually see a cover up in the making. Because it's like, you can't explain this to anybody. Because if anyone else found out about this, they wouldn't believe you. So it's like, you can't present that thing either. Because it's face is bashed in. Plus the way it is now, it's just kind of like, it, just kind of leave it as it is. Because no one's going to go in that damn cave just because it's unsafe. Like, who would, no one's going to bother going in there. So it's like, um... He also thought of something. He also brought up something I thought was interesting too. He said a line of like, because Holly was like, "Are there others of you out there?" And he was like, "He's like, I always felt like there might be others." So it's like, okay, dude, that's well, we'll get to it uh, soon enough. But it's like everyone's got to cover their bases. Uh, Ralph is talking to you know the locals about like what went down, saying that Jack probably basically brought them into a trap. He's like, I thought it. He's like, I, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't know, I didn't kind of believe the situation. So I didn't believe, you know, when I thought it might be an ambush and it turned out to be an ambush. So, and it's like, dude, they get uh, Jenny in this. They, Jenny ends up talking to Gloria and telling Gloria is like, eventually they're going to come and question you about this. You cannot mention anything supernatural, whether you believe this or not. Don't mention anything supernatural. Don't mention the talk with Holly either, like uh, the whole gathering we had. Uh, when she brought up this whole El Cuco situation because they, it's like it will jeopardize because for one they're all going to look crazy at the very least this way we can kind of make things open and shut even clear um, Terry's um, name because even having Claude being like yeah it was, I, I was mistaken it wasn't actually Terry it was just someone that looked like Terry I was like dude they're, this is, like I said is a deep deep cut but even the cops at like you see one of the locals looking at like they don't focus on it but he's way in the background as ralph is leaving and part of me was wondering whether he actually believed ralph or not but it's like well what else is there to believe you know so it's like holy crap even the da dude because he was like wait really like because he was at first because he was looking over the surveillance tape so it's like for him it's like something's just not right about this but this i guess kind of well because basically they present it as if like jack wasn't the mastermind that actually they're like jack was just kind of like the right hand man that actually there was someone else on top of all this somewhere out there so it's always going to be a case that's always going to be unsolved but at the end of the day he's like the fact is i can assure you that terry's name is going to be exonerated the fact of the matter is when it's all said and done you know he's like i can't speak to my the heart of like what i really want to say because i'm being you know you're suing me and everything Cause i think it's like because because of everything it's like it's a situation where i think he wants to speak from the heart and be like i'm a hundred percent sorry this is all my fault but the moment you admit fault it turns into a whole liability thing like on your benefit like she could kind of basically 
take you to the bank and back because of it. So there's a little protection in that, but also it's just like he does feel bad because he was one of the people pushing forward for this whole situation. So, but I think it brings glory at least some solitude. There is some silver lining at the very least that Terry's name is, you know, um, exonerated you know it's hard for holly because she has to bring up the whole thing about like how andy got involved kind of not even mentioning like her relationship with him and as, as like the cops that were interviewing walked away she kind of broke down a little bit just because it's like once again I, I think she blames herself because andy got involved because he liked her and it's just it, it's it's a sad outcome to this whole situation but it's dealt with and so now it's a situation of like you know holly's leaving you know and I like that the whole thing between her and Ralph, where Ralph was kind of like, you know, maybe, you know, we work, we make a good team. Like, maybe we should work together again. Maybe on something basically not so complicated, you know, maybe like some like regular murders or something like that, you know. And it's like, you know, she's like, you know, when El Cuco asked me, why did I believe, you know, because out of anyone, Holly was the first one. Like, obviously, she gathered it, but it, why was it so easy for her above anyone else to believe? She never got to answer that question. And for her, and I loved her response. An outsider knows an outsider because Holly's always been an outsider her entire life. So, you know, she's always been kind of seen as this outsider. So when she sees an opportunity to see someone kind of in that same vein, she was able to kind of jump on it immediately to be, be able to believe it. You know, and I thought that was such an interesting line. And even Ralph asking, like, what else is out there? And just Holly kind of smiles because, you know, none of them know. And I think for her, that's the intriguing part of this. So, um, you know, Ralph... And, you know, Jeannie, because uh, it's like, yeah, I, I didn't tell you this, but I saw Derek. And she was like, what? What happened? He's like, all right, it wasn't really Derek. She's like, well, I, I know, but still tell me. And so it's a whole thing of like, you know, he was like, it was telling me to let him go. And she's like, yeah, fat chance of that happening. And they both kind of laugh about it. But, you know, he's like, you know, maybe one day I will, if I see Derek again, it really will be him then. And she's like, or maybe, you know, many, many years from now, we'll go visit him, you know, when they, you know, pass on and whatever it's waiting in the next step of life. I didn't talk about it either. Ginny burning that chair was interesting. I mean, I think it was symbolic to be like, okay, I'm, there is some part of her, like, she couldn't bring herself to completely destroy it. But I think it's just now knowing that thing is dead, it's like, get rid of any traces of it. But also just because you can't have the chance that, you know, maybe because that's still evidence laying around that that thing exists. So you need to burn all ties that, that this thing exists. Pretend like it didn't exist at all. So I'm like, hell of a way to close it off and then we get into holly's situation when we see at the end there where she's looking on the computer and everything and uh oh well, no because she was in the bathroom she looks up and she sees jack, jack in the mirror she freaks out she grabs a little mirror and she feels the back of her neck because she's like all right did is that thing is it still alive is it messing with me and so it's like wait well what, what what was that what was that in that moment you know so i thought that was really interesting so it's like okay and then, you know, she goes back immediately to the computer. She sees, like, all right, you know, it's like Terry has been exonerated. I'm not sure about the music at the end. I'm assuming that's supposed to be the song. I could be mistaken. The song that Ralph had talked about, was it last episode, I want to say? The one about the one that he had heard about, like, his mom or whatever. Like, that song of hers that he had never heard on the radio. Then one day, like, it just happened to pop up on the radio. And, like, you know, and she was, like, a coincidence and stuff. So, I'm wondering if that was that song. I could be mistaken. But then you had that thing of her fiddling with her hair. I was like, what are you going to reveal? What are you? And then there's a cut on her arm. And I'm like, wait. Well, what the hell does that mean? mean in the grand scheme of things like is it just her being haunted by the fact is that well because for one jack was you know obviously there was a whole thing of like well he did try to set you up to kill you but also at the same time it's like he ended up killing a lot of people including the man that you were, you had fallen for but also you know it's just like you weren't able to bring him to justice like you know at the end of the day he was a victim in all of this but still it's just a he's kind of like i don't know like the fact that she had that cut on her hand makes me go like because that's what I was almost wondering, because at one point, as it was shifting, I was like, at one point I was like, is that thing turning into Holly? I mean, it, it shifted between different faces, but I was like, well, is that thing about to become Holly? But I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. Maybe it's just a cut from, like, you know, everything kind of going down, like, in a sense of, like, the cave-in, the little bit of the cave-in, maybe it was from that. Because she never got directly, well, the closest she ever got to the thing was when she stabbed it, but it never touched her then, did it? So that's why I'm confused. I'm like, maybe that's unrelated, but just the fact that they show it off makes me think that's significant, but that's where it ends. 
I had to look it up to be uh, sure because obviously this series was kind of pitched as a mini series and it was kind of like it seemed like a one and done. But obviously the question is up in the air. We're kind of in that Watchmen situation of is there going to be a second season? Because this story is complete in its entirety. It leaves open some questions, but in all in all cases, it is completely resolved because it seems like this is basically, I'm not familiar with the novel, but from what I can tell, it seems like this told all the story that was in the original novel. So, but that doesn't mean they still couldn't go further. I mean, because especially going forward, like you can definitely like follow like Holly and like, you know, make it kind of an anthology series, kind of very similar to like the center on the USA. You could easily make it so like it's a very similar thing of Holly investigating cases very similar to this, kind of more on the supernatural side of things. Or maybe it will stay a one and done. Who knows that? I'm sure that depends on a lot of uh, factors. How many people want a second season? It, it, for when I was reading, it seemed like the showrunner might want a second season. Um, I'd be interested to see ultimately what they would do. Because, I mean, once again, I'm a sucker for, like, you know, following certain characters. So, like, if they decided to kind of uh, bring back another supernatural mystery. I mean, once again... We don't know if this is the only thing out there in the world. Like, there might be other El Cucos. There might be other things in general. I'm curious to see what they would do. Once again, literally the same situation as Watchmen. If they decided, hey, this is going to be a one and done. We told the story we wanted to tell. That's all we're going to get. I'm fine with that. But if they decided, like, all right, there's also ample opportunity to, to continue this. Like I said, I would expect, I mean, not unless they got a completely different cast. But I would assume, if anything, you would continue with Holly I wouldn't expect Ralph I mean to be fair Ralph's world is kind of opened up more now because like this has changed a lot of people because Eunice walked away from this uh you know so did Ralph so did Jeannie them all being believers as well as Claude I mean sadly he ended up losing so much family um so it's just yeah, I'm curious to see what they do but for now that's why I'm you know leaving it as is so we'll, we'll ultimately have to see at the end of the day what HBO ends up doing I'm be curious to see whichever route they choose you know so but i really that's all i wanted to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe love like to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye